there, welcome to Gangki Productions. I'm Crown Grace Cocon. Let's get into the video. Today's video, we're not going to be doing our usual film reviews. Instead, what we're going to be doing over the course of this video and the next is we're going to be looking at two different directors who work for Disney. One who stayed at Disney Studios and the other who ended up leaving. So we'll talk more about the latter one in the next video. But for this video, we're going to be looking at none other than Wolfgang Reifenman. So if you like what you've seen already, don't forget obviously hit the like button, subscribe if you haven't already, hit the bell button so you stay notified, and also a big shout out to Forrest Dupree. So he is someone who has left a comment in the comment section for many of our videos, so a big shout out to him. And we're starting a new thing now, whereby I give a shout out to people who leave a comment. So yeah, so in the future, if we end up getting loads of comments, we may just do it on you know the end of the video like on screen. But for now, you know, I'm gonna give a shout out to people, right? So that's kind of how we're going to be moving things moving forwards. And uh, yeah, enough of my babbling. Let's just dive straight into the video now. So Wolfgang Reifman was born in Munich, Bavaria in 1909. And his family moved to America when he was just a child. And he was raised in Sierra Madre in California. So young Woolley, he was absolutely fascinated by aircraft. And obviously this is like a relatively new technology in those days, but he wanted to be an aircraft engineer. And so when it came time, this is what he went off to study. And actually he ended up working at Douglas Aircraft for a brief amount of time. But obviously the young men, you know, they're prone to change their mind. And so at age 22, so this is 1931, he decided that he wasn't going to be an aircraft engineer anymore. Instead, he decided he was going to be an artist. So this is where he went to the, the Chianard Art Institute in Los Angeles. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. Uh, but this is where he went off to go and study watercolour. So it was while he was at this institute that he ended up coming across Philip L. Dyke. And this was uh, one of the instructors who at that time worked for Disney Studios. The Disney Studios in these days, you know, you're talking 1933 at this point, is a very, very small operation. So, you know, they hadn't made any of their feature length films yet. This wouldn't come until 1937. And so in these early days, Walt Disney was just looking for a different animators. So when Walt Disney ended up seeing his artwork, this is where he was absolutely blown away. And he decided at that point that Wolfgang Reifman was going to be on the animation department. And as they say, the rest is history. So the very first work that Wolfgang ended up working on was one of the Silly Symphonies. And this was called Funny Little Bunnies, uh, which came out in 1933. And he went on to work on several other short cartoons until in 1937, he ended up hitting it big. And this is with the very first uh, Disney feature length film, which was of course, Snow White. So the bit that he worked on in particular with this was with regard to the so-called slave in the mirror. So this is obviously the person speaking in the mirror. So he is the one who animated that role there. And then fast forward a few years, you end up having Pinocchio. So he's the one who animated Monstro the Whale. And also in 1940, you had Fantasia. So he's the one who animated the dinosaur fight in that. And then also in 1941, you're not having Dumbo, and he did several of the scenes which had Timothy the Mouse in that. So it's 1942, obviously World War II is already underway, America has just joined. So he ended up signing up for the US Army Air Force, and this is where he served from 1942 to 1946. And it was during this time that he ended up earning the Distinguished Flying Cross, for his adventures uh, in Africa, in India, in China, and in the South Pacific. And by the time he ended up being discharged in 1946, he had risen all the way up to the rank of being a major. So in 1946, obviously after he's been discharged, he ended up going straight back to working for Disney Studios. And by 1950, he ended up having a very pivotal role in convincing Walt Disney to actually put in the work and to start producing Cinderella. So at this point, this is where he ended up being promoted to being a directing animator. And in particular, he ended up overseeing the mice within that film, in particular, Jacques and Gus, who are the main two mice. Then he ended up having the same role once again, but this time for Alice in Wonderland, which obviously came out in 1951. And in particular, he focused on the white rabbit in that. And then for Peter Pan, which came out in 1953, he focused in particular on Captain Hook and the crocodile. And then finally, uh, within this role, he ended up doing uh, Lady in the Tramp, which was 1955. And in this, he focused on the tramp, the alley dogs and the rat. So by 1957, he ended up having his first shot at being an actual director. 
and this was for a short documentary which was called The Truth About Mother Goose. And in 1959, he ended up being promoted once again to being a sequence director for Sleeping Beauty. So of course, from this point on, his career just continued to blossom. And so he ended up directing many minor films, but also every major animated film which Disney produced from 1961 with 101 Dalmatians, all the way up to The Rescuers in 1977. So he played a part in directing every single one of these films. And it should also be noted that he was the very first director within the Disney studios who was given the role of being the sole director for a film. So every film up to that point had had multiple different directors. Every other animated film had multiple different directors, but he was the first one who was given the sole uh, authority on that. So every film from 1963 with The Sword and the Stone, all the way up to Robin Hood in 1973, he was the sole director of that. And actually we should say as well, that one of the things that he was kind of known for was recycling and reusing clips. So this is why, as we kind of mentioned in the video to do with Robin Hood, this is why you see so many of the sequences having a lot of the same similarities, yeah, because they're basically using the same base things for that and recycling it once again. And also we should say that there was a little bit of nepotism, can't lie, uh, but you know, it, it was to a good cause. And this is because his three sons, this is Bruce, Richard and Robert, they end up appearing in several uh, different Disney films. So you end up having The Wart from The Sword and the Stone, you had Mowgli from Jungle Book, and also you had Christopher Robin from the Winnie the Pooh series. And when he died in 1985, it was an absolutely devastating thing, obviously for his family, but also for the Disney Studios. And the reason for that is because after Walt had died in 1966, he actually played a very active part in being a producer for all of the Disney films which came out from 1970 to 1981. So The Fox and Hound was the last film that he ended up producing. But yeah, so he played an absolutely pivotal role with all of these things. So when he died, you know, the Disney Studios was already in a bit of trouble at this point. And this is where they end up reaching the era of so-called rock bottom. But to talk more about this era of uh, rock bottom, we're going to have to talk about that more in the next video. And this is where we're going to be looking at the uh, other director who ended up leaving the studios. And this was Don Bluth. So we'll cover more in our next video, but you know, if you like this video, don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe if you haven't already, hit the bell button so you stay notified, and also don't forget, like we said, leave a comment, you know, well, I will I give you a shout out in the next video, and uh, yes, yeah, so our next video is going to be on Don Booth, so in the meantime, have a great day, and bye.